Okay, I'm gonna make this video. Been been getting asked a lot of questions about this for a long time. We sell a lot of our tubs, uh, CJ YJ tubs, and mount on CJ sevens because they're a lot easier to find, and usually in a lot better shape for whatever reason that is. Now, CJ seven tub is or CJ seven frame is this guy, and this came off of a. Let me think if I remember this one, eighty four, I believe this was, eighty four CJ seven. And then that's a YJ, and that came off a 94, so almost 10 years difference. So actually, that's perfect. So I haven't cleaned them up at all. Um, I'm about to do that in a minute. But I just wanted to show you a comparison. Uh, Lengthwise, they're identical. Uh, Widthwise, they're identical. I know they look a little different how the way they form these two, but they are. We measured them. And the difference is, other than you can see the, the shock towers and the motor mounts here, and these ones obviously are mounted on, they come off, uh, which we have inside if you need them. Um, the difference is, there, there really is not much actually, they're, they're almost identical. Uh, you can take a, you can really go either way with this actually, but the difference is, so these two here, these are your front, uh, um, excuse me, it's a little chilly here, body, uh, body mounts for your frame to your tub, and then your middle ones of course, and then your rear ones. Now your rear ones are the difference. So these measure exactly, I think this one here is 37 and a half inches. Um, from center to center and then that's the same there and then the center to center here I believe is 41 inches and then 41 here so these two are the same and if you look they're mounted in virtually the same spot and then you got the one back here um, now this is not exactly squared up it just needs to go a little further back but you can you get the gist of it this one here there's two ways you can do this some guys prefer to go up into the YJ tub keep the frames all the same and then just go right up. What I would probably do is kind of what this guy was doing here, which he never finished it, or maybe he just broke this one and was re-welding it anyway. Um, regardless, it's a junk weld that came off. But point is, is that I would probably suggest to move these guys because they're fairly easy to, um, and you could actually mount it on the body and then uh, just weld it right in place wherever it's gonna sit. But, you know, you can do as you want. That's, these are shock towers for the rear, and those are the shock towers for the rear. That one's gone, obviously that one's bad but uh you get that just now here's the back too um right over your gas tank and again right over your gas tank and then your back area there and then your back area here so all the same uh, as far as this stuff goes and these holes are the same measurement too the width of the frames are exactly the same and uh and whatnot so i think that covers it um now here's my little uh, tagline this is jeeps unlimited we're inside a Denver, Colorado, or outside of Denver, Colorado, I should say. Uh, we're a high mountain desert, so we don't get the rust on our Jeeps. Um, this Jeep was from South Carolina. This guy here, which we don't buy a lot of, but we needed the engine harness out of it, so we did. And then this CJ7 came from Missouri. So um, both of these actually have rod on them. And, and sometimes I like showing that just to show you um, the difference between what you're gonna find somewhere like this. These are actually still pretty good frames. Uh, this one needs a rear section put on, but the front part of it is all good. It's solid. It didn't need it. It didn't need it away other than just the back section. And then this frame is good other than the mount there, of course. Um, and that's about it. These are both probably would say grade B on this guy and grade C on this side, just because you do have to replace a rear section. You could just patch this, but I would just cut that off and redo it. Um, and I can probably get you a rear section of these. I probably have one around if you're interested. Okay, so I think that does it. Now, my Jeep's Unlimited, you can see my yard. Um, I have a massive yard. We're the largest Jeep only parts in the world. We have every part down in the nuts and bolts. Sometimes we run thin on some things, but we're constantly getting new stuff in. We're kind of thin in our Cherokees out. Um, we're gonna go back to CJs and Wranglers only, but we will do occasional Cherokees as well. I got so much Cherokee parts right now, they should last me a long time. I shouldn't have to buy anymore. All my tubs are in the back back there. All my axles are here frames I'm doing right now I just have them stacked here while I get them cleaned up and then photoed and videoed um, and then I got some CJ5 frames uh, there's some YJ ones over here a lot of grade A stuff and then my JK sections here JKs were made to their sectional frames um, makes it a little bit easier to mount them but you do have to weld more on these or we can sell them in a whole piece and then we do have some YJ TJ and JK tubs Again, this video was mainly to show you you can take a YJ tub and mount it on a CJ frame 
because so many people had rotted frames on their CJs. We do get CJ7 uh, tubs in every once in a while. They go for a lot of money. Usually we get about three grand out of a grade A, whereas a grade A YJ were around 1500 um, so half the price and really not a lot of work to do now if you're trying to do all original you know matching blah blah, blah then you probably want to stick with CJ7 the one thing I would <clears throat> recommend against and we do sell these is the Omex um, repops as we like to call them or the aftermarket tubs there's two reasons why they're not bad quality I mean the metals a little thinner but the main thing I don't like about them a they're very expensive but B they're they're usually not cut out the firewalls aren't cut out so you usually have to uh cut those out and then um the emblems like where they're raised jeep on the side aren't cut out there's just a lot of work there's a lot of extra work for spinning anywhere from 3500 on up to 5500 is what those things go for uh and then having to do all the work on after you can go with a $1,500 YJ tub or a $3,000 CJ7 tub. Um, and again, that price does vary depending on the condition of them. And uh, really don't have to do much other than, as you've seen, if you're doing, you know, swap, direct swap, that'll bolt right on. If you're doing a YJ to CJ, uh, you'll have to change um, a little bit of the rear area out in it. But other than that, that's it. Uh, so I'll get these guys cleaned up and then these will go up uh, for sale as well. Um, again, a 1500 grade A, frame uh plus shipping we ship all over the country uh this one this one's grade b so this one will probably be listed for around 1200 and then plus shipping and then uh that cj7 frame over there is actually a steel right now i think we have it listed for like 600 bucks plus shipping and that's again because you'll have to do work on that normally a good cj7 grade a is going to run you about the same as a yj anywhere from 15 to 18 depending just how good we had one come in yesterday that had like 10,000 miles on it and it sold the second we listed it. We have a really nice grade A uh, CJ5 frame like that too. So anyway, I'll stop blabbing. If you do need any other parts, so please give us a call 303-666-9020 jeepsunlimited.net not .com, .net. That's our website. I've uh, been here for 30 years. I actually just took it over two years ago and um, that website it's got a lot of new stuff on it. We're, con we're, we're working on getting all of our used parts on it, but it's taken us a while. It's 75,000 used parts we have to list, and it's one by one. Okay, so I'm out of breath now, and uh, I'll let you go. But I do appreciate uh, all the attention we've received over the past few years, and good luck, and let me know if you need anything.